Good afternoon, folks. And uh, I've uh, sustained the objection to the last, uh, so let's uh, proceed. Good afternoon, Mr. Rittenhouse. Good afternoon. You testified earlier that there were times that evening when uh, Mr. Rosenbaum had threatened you. Is that right? Yes. And you described him as wearing a red shirt with a blue bandana. Is that correct? At, at certain times. Yeah. When he threatened you, that's what he was wearing? The, I believe the first time he threatened me, he was wearing a red shirt with the blue bandana. The second time, he had it wrapped around his face. Had what wrapped around his face? His his T-shirt. So he wasn't wearing a shirt the second time around. Correct. And you indicated at one point you thought he had a chain in his hand. I believe he so. Okay. When he uh, made the threat to you with the red shirt on and the blue bandana, did he have the chain in his hand? I think one of the times he did. Okay. And so which of the times was it? I can't recall off the top of my head. I think it was the time w when he was threatening to cut people's hearts out. And I, I don't need to know the threat, I just need to know which time it was. Was it the first time or the second time? Second time. I, I, the second time. What was he wearing the second time? Uh, he, he was masked, well, the shirt wrapped around his face. And he didn't have the, he didn't have a shirt on his torso? Correct. And you could see, when he didn't have a shirt on his torso, that he didn't have any gun tucked in his waistband, correct? I wasn't paying attention to that. I was I was behind Joanne Fiedler. I was somewhere over there. So how far away were you from Mr. Rosenbaum when he made the second threat? By uh, 15, 10, 15 feet, I'm, I'm not really certain. But you were close enough to hear the words out of his mouth? Yes. And you took that as a threat to you personally? I took the first one where he said, if I catch you alone, I'm going to kill you. I took that as a threat to me personally. The second time, I took that as a threat to the group. Can we have that uh, photo, uh, Exhibit 138, up on the screen, please? Do you see Mr. Rosenbaum in this picture? I do. And he's in the middle of the picture wearing the red shirt with the blue bandana carrying the plastic bag, correct? Yes. Is that the way he looked when he made the first threat to you? When he said, if I catch you alone, yes. And he was carrying that plastic bag with him when he made that threat too, correct? Correct. How close was he when he made that first threat to you? Close. I couldn't give you an exact estimate, but he was cl close, less than five feet. So closer than Madam Court Reporter is to you now? I'd say about the same, if not a little bit closer. And you were next to Mr. Balch when that was said? Correct. Was anyone else there besides you, Mr. Balch, and Mr. Rosenbaum? I believe there were other uh, demonstrators um, around. And you've seen in this trial that there's been a lot of video footage of that night, correct? Yes. And you've seen in this trial that there's a lot of video footage of you that night, correct? Yes. You'd agree with me that there's no video of either one of these threats, correct? I don't know if somebody filmed it um, that I'm aware of right now. You're not aware of any, are you? I'm not. So Mr. Rosenbaum looked like that at the time of the first threat but then looked different at the time of the second threat? Is that right? Yes. And did you say he was carrying the chain when he made the first threat or the second one? The second. Okay. 
And he was still carrying that plastic bag the second time? Yes. That plastic bag has a, has a clear side to it that allows you to see inside of it, right? Sort of. I didn't really look into the bag. So you didn't know what was in the bag at all? I didn't. Did he swing the chain at you when he made the second threat? He did not. Did he uh, physically touch you when he made the second threat? No, he didn't. In fact, that entire evening, he never once touched you or your body, did he? He he grabbed my gun when he attacked me. And that's why I asked the question the way I did. He never touched your body that night, correct? He didn't touch me physically. Okay. And the, neither the first or the second time did he run at you or charge at you or anything like that, did he? He didn't chase me. He didn't even do anything physically aggressive to you, did he? No. He just said some words? Yes. And that chain that he had in his hand, he never did anything to physically threaten you with that chain, correct? Yes. Is that correct? That's correct. And other than the chain that you've described, at no point in the evening did you ever see Joseph Rosenbaum with any other type of weapon, correct? Not that I saw. Never saw him with a gun? Correct. Never saw him with a knife? Correct. Never saw him with a bat? Correct. Never saw him with a club? Correct. How far apart in time were these two threats that you say Mr. Rosenbaum made to you? I want to say, I, I can't give you an, a definite time. I wasn't looking at my clock, but I, I'd say within the same hour. And both of those threats occurred while you were on the 59th Street property? The, the, s the second threat um, happened at the corner, and the first threat um, happened tr towards Ruther Central High School. Okay, could you use that laser pointer and, and uh, point out on that map where the first threat occurred? The first threat happened right here at the in front of the building. So you're pointing at a location that is by the 59th Street car source on the south side of that property uh, along the building and Sheridan Road on the west side of the road. Would that be accurate? Yes. Okay. And uh, you said there was a second threat within an hour after that, correct? Yes. Where was that threat at? It was somewhere over here, I remember, like on the other side of the property, towards mm -hmm. Ruther Central. More towards the northeast corner of that same property. Correct. But you were still on the car source property when that second threat was allegedly made, correct? Yes. Did you remember what Mr. Rosenbaum had said to you later on when he's confronting you at the 63rd Street car source? I took a mental picture of his face um, when he threat when he said those threats. I recognized that was him that said that when he started chasing me. So when you are running away from him at the 63rd car Street car source, you're thinking to yourself, this is the guy who had made a threat to me earlier. Is that fair to say? I was thinking this is the guy that said, if he catches me alone, he'll kill me um, as I'm running away from him. The reason I asked Mr. Rose, or Mr. Rittenhouse is, how did you know it was the same guy when he's changed the way he looks? His appearance, the shorts, his height. But in both of those instances that you've described, he's got something covering his face, either the blue bandana in one instance or the red shirt in a different instance, correct? He was wearing the red shirt when he chased me around his head. So you remember that from the second time that you say he threatened you? Yes. And you thought to yourself, this is the same guy? Yes. So when you eventually were getting to the point where you're going down to the 63rd Street car source right before the, sh the shooting, you recognized him as you're following him down the street, didn't you? I didn't follow Mr. Rosenbaum down the street. He was in front of you. You know that now, right? I, I know that now. But you didn't you didn't see him ahead of you as you're walking down there that night? No, it was dark out. But you, 
at some point as you get close to the 63rd Street car source, start running towards that lot, right? Towards the fire that in the Duramax. And Mr. Rosenbaum is running ahead of you, isn't he? I don't, I don't believe so. But you decided you needed to run because of the fire on the Duramax? Yes. Why? What was so urgent? It was a fire. There's fires all over the place, so? I was getting to the fire to put it out. We'll, we'll get back to that in a second. You indicated that while you were at the 59th Street car source, you said you put out a, a fire at the church next door. Is that right? Yes. Did you hear Joanne Fiedler's testimony yesterday that when you guys went over there, somebody had put some sort of flammable liquid on the door? Did you hear that testimony? I did. I believe that was at referring to the Ruther Central High School. Okay. So when she described it as happening at the church, you think that was she was getting it confused? Yes. Uh, yes? Okay. So uh, whatever happened with this flammable liquid on the door, the point is s some other group, some other people put that out before you even got there. Correct. correct. Why did you feel that you uh, should go around off the 59th Street car source property and put out fires? To make sure my community didn't get burnt down and help. And when you say your community, you mean Kenosha? Yes. Again, you're from Antioch. You're not living in Kenosha at this time when this all happens, right? My dad lives in Kenosha. Lots of people live in Kenosha, but you didn't, right? My residence was in Antioch. Okay. But you felt like you wanted to do things to protect this community. Fair? The community that I was part of, yes. And you felt like it was appropriate for you to take matters into your own hands to put out fires, for example. To put out fires by using a fire extinguisher, yes. Even though they weren't on the 59th Street property, correct? Correct. And were there other things that you decided it would be appropriate for you to go out there and take care of off the 59th Street property that night? I was walking around and asking people if they needed medical help. So you felt that you wanted to go out and um, help people, uh, help protect people, help people feel better, treat people, things like that, Provi even off the 59th Street. Property. Provide first aid. Normally in our regular society, that's something that we call 911 for, right? Normally, yes. Where are we headed? <coughs> I, I think that the defendant's decisions to go off that property and involve himself in other matters are relevant, Your Honor. Well, I'll let you pursue it, but... Um, um, and that's exactly how these shootings happen, so... Well, uh, that's what the trial is about. Uh, uh, which is go, why I go think ahead, it's go ahead. I uh, <coughs> go ahead. Normally, we would if there's a fire, if there's somebody committing a crime, you call 911, right? Normally, yes. You didn't feel like you could do that that night, correct? I don't think that I, I saw from the nights prior that um, the fire department wasn't responding to put out fires. Well. The nights before, there were businesses on fire along 22nd Avenue. There's the car source, uh, large-scale property fires on the prior nights, correct? Yes. On the night of August 25th, we didn't have any fires like that. We just had a couple dumpsters, smaller things, right? That I saw, yes. I didn't hear you, sir. That I saw, yes. But regardless of how big the fire is, um, you felt that night that calling 911 was not an option, correct? I didn't feel that if I called 911, anyone would, would show up. Which is why you decided to take care of it yourself, correct? To provide first aid and put out fires. 
to do the things that normally we would expect the police or the fire department to do, correct? To help, help people, yes. Could you please move that microphone a little closer so we can make sure we hear everything you're saying? It can, it can adjust the, if you need to move it a little closer. Thank you. Just a moment. Uh, how's the temperature? Uh, how many are comfortable the way things are? Okay, I, I won't even ask the other side. Uh, see you ice cubes, there's nothing to worry about. <laughs> it must be blowing differently here. Go ahead, Mr. You came to Kenosha that night armed with the AR-15 and no other ways to physically defend yourself, correct? I had an AR-15, yes. Other than that, you had no other weapons or devices that you could use to defend yourself that night, correct? Yes. In There's an interview in which you say you're not carrying anything non-lethal. Do you recall that? I do. You indicated in response to one of your attorney's questions that there was no friction with the protesters that night. Did I understand you correctly? By friction, you mean? Well, I'm using your words, sir. I, I heard you say, in response to your attorney's question, that there was no <coughs> friction with the protesters that night. Did I hear you correctly? Uh, yes. Uh. And you're describing what you observed when you were at the 59th Street car source. Fair enough? Yes. So based on your several hours at that location, it seemed to you as though the crowd of, however you want to describe them, they've been called rioters, protesters, demonstrators, and you, things were fine. No tension, no friction, no nothing. Fair to say? For the most part, other than Mr. Rosenbaum. He was the only one. That threatened, yes. That you saw? Yes. Can we please play exhibit number 18 at the 1 hour and 22 second and 14, I'm sorry, 22 minute and 14 second mark? Please play from this point. And uh, militia are up there. We need water. Yeah, we got a fire. Where? Oh, dumpster fire. Yeah, just a dumpster fire. Hey, it's just like the year, man. <laughs> yeah, right. If 2020 was a blunt, it would be just a fucking stem. It would just, yeah, it would just be stem and see, man. Yeah, right. I could use a doobie right now. Hey, cover me, I got this shot. All right, let's. Water, how's it going? Got more fucking around to find out. Hey, 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 hey. You won't reel in. You reel in. Reel in. Don't cause problems when there's none here. Yeah, that's true. Just stay on your property. Let them. Just, otherwise, we'll pop. There's way too many of them there. I have to agree with her. I, 
I have to agree with her. Yeah, she shouldn't be on the street. Hey. It was protecting their property. One yeah, of their no, guy, guys is an asshole. I know. I thought they were yelling at them. I was like, why? Oh, no, well, 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 we did well, get they lit it on fire. One of the guys is losing his patience. He should go inside. Yeah, that's what we're about to send him. Yeah, if you guys could switch him out. Just uh, somebody's a uh, loose cannon. He, he's got a lot of rage. He says the wrong thing. This whole crowd burns you guys alive. Yeah. Protect your property, they're respecting that, just take, keep it there. Do you think that looks like friction? A little bit. And you witnessed that, didn't you? I didn't was witness what Mr. Uh, Collette did. I didn't see that. But you saw the reaction from the crowd, right? Yeah, a little bit. I wasn't really paying much attention to that. Would you agree with me that it seems that the crowd was reacting to members of your group going out in the street and trying to interfere with what was going on off your property? I don't think they were happy about it. Um. And in fact, Kristan Harris, who made this video, specifically told you to stay on your property <coughs> and not go out on the street and try and put out fires or interfere with any of that stuff. Just protect your property. Isn't that what he told you? I believe so. I was just going to grab the garbage can, uh, the dumpster that belonged to the car source that was on the car source property. This is before you headed south towards the 63rd Street car source, right? Yes. This is before you decided to go down there with a fire extinguisher, correct? Yes. This is before you shot Mr. Rosenbaum, Mr. Huber, Mr. Grosskreutz, and at the person that was jumping over you, correct? Yes. So you knew that this was a crowd that would not react very favorably to you going out there and trying to put out fires or interfere with any of that stuff. You knew that, didn't you? I didn't. Even after that incident, you still didn't have any idea that this is a crowd that's not going to take it very well. It seems like they were more mad at the part of him screaming what he screamed after not putting out the fire. That's what it seemed like to me. And he screams to them, fuck around and find out, right? That's what he screamed to them. After they had just tried to light a dumpster on fire. Right? Yes. So what did you interpret that to mean? I don't know. I didn't witness in the time. I just grabbed the dumpster a minute after and tried to pull it onto the property. Because it seems to me he's saying, you light stuff on fire and I'm going to use my gun. Your Honor, that's a total I'll, I'll withdraw the question. It doesn't matter what it seems to you. Your Honor, I guess he not ask the questions and then withdraw. Yeah, you know, it, it doesn't matter what you, what it seems to you. You can ask your questions. That's fine. Go ahead. It was shortly after that incident that we just watched where you were interviewed by Richie McGinnis. Correct? Yes. And you said you've never never heard of him, never dealt with him before this night? I have not. Okay. So why did you talk to him? He seemed like a nice guy. Did he introduce himself as from the media? Uh, he didn't specifically said, hey, I'm from the media. He was like, hey, do you want to do an interview? And when you heard him ask you to do an interview, you didn't think that many's from the media? No. I not what I said. I said he didn't specifically say he was from the media. Okay, but you, you assumed when he says, I'm going to interview you, that he's from the media, right? Yes. And did he tell you he's from the Daily Caller? He did not. Okay. So you didn't know what media company he worked for? Correct. But you agreed to have him interview you on camera, correct? Yes. 
Can we please play exhibit number 16? to protect yourself, correct? Yes. And you indicate that you're going to run out there and treat anyone who needs medical help, correct? Yes. Were you going to bring the gun along when you did that? Yes. To defend yourself while you're treating someone? If I needed to defend myself if while treating somebody, yes. If you didn't think there was friction with the crowd and you're out there trying to help, why did you expect there'd be any danger? From the previous night when I saw people being assaulted. Were they medics being assaulted? I don't know who they were. I know one of them was just trying to put out a fire at his business. So you saw someone put out a fi who was trying to put out a fire who got assaulted? Yes. But I, if you're going to help people, why would you expect anyone to try and hurt you? I don't know. Um, somebody did try to hurt me, and I was helping people. Well, that came, you're talking about later on. Yes. Okay, but at this moment in time, this is before the shootings. Yes. This is before you cross 60th, before you deal with Rosenbaum, Huber, Grosskreutz, all that, right? Yes. So at this moment in time, you don't think there's a hostile crowd, you're there to help people, and yet you're going to run out there with the AR-15. I don't understand why you felt that you were going to be in danger if you're out in a friendly, what you think is a friendly crowd, helping them. I didn't, I didn't say I didn't think they were hostile. I didn't think they were hostile towards us. Okay, so they're not hostile to you, and you're going to go help them. Why do you need the gun when you go out there? Um, I, I need the gun because... If I had to protect myself because somebody attacked me. Why would you think anybody would do that? I don't know. But you clearly planned on it. You were prepared for it. You thought it was going to happen. No, I didn't. That's the whole reason you brought the gun, isn't it? I brought the gun to protect myself. Exactly. Because you thought you personally were going to be in danger, right? Not necessarily. I don't understand. You said you're going to bring the gun to protect yourself. So you thought you were going to be in danger, right? I didn't think I would be put into a situation to where I would have to defend myself. You said that the people around you on that property and the people up on the roof were there to protect you. That's what you said in the video, right? Yes. You meant when you go out in the crowd, they're, there, they're going to protect you, right? Watch over me, yes watch over and protect you, right? Yes. Again, because you expected that if you go out in that crowd to try and provide medical service, you thought you were going to get attacked? They were to watch me they were on the roof to watch me, and if somebody was to attack me in their view, they could say, hey, Kyle, watch out. They've got AR-15s. Yes. We talked earlier about the fact that the AR-15, you can't use deadly force to protect the building, right? Correct. The AR-15 was to protect you, right? That's what you just said. 
not the AR-15. I said they could shout down to me and be like, hey, Kyle, watch out. So they're just carrying around the AR-15s for no reason? I don't know why they're carrying around the AR-15s. Can we play exhibit? Uh, at th at this is the end. At the end of this video is where you invite Mr. McGinnis to follow you and Ryan Balch, correct? Yes. And you invited him to do that because you want, I think you said on, when your attorney was asking you questions, that you wanted him to film you while you were out in the crowd doing your thing. Fair? I, yeah, I said it was okay for him to film me. Let's play exhibit uh, 17, please. you so you're a certified EMT and you said yes correct yes that was a lie correct I'm not an EMT you're not a certified EMT you're not an EMT of any kind you weren't on that night correct yes so you lied to him correct I told him I was I told him I was an EMT but I wasn't and you knew you were being interviewed by someone in the media when you told that lie didn't you yes please continue and you work as an EMT normally? Back up 10 seconds, please. And then just pause right there. We just heard um, a voice say something to you, Mr. Balch, about people throwing rocks or something along those lines. I don't really need to know exactly what they said, but did you hear that voice? The police officer from the Bearcat, yes. That's what I was going to ask. That's one of the law enforcement officers in that armored vehicle that you're walking past, correct? Yes. And this what we're watching in this video happens um, a few minutes after those same Bearcats had come to the 59th Street property and handed you some bottles of water, correct? Yes. And they say to you something to the effect of, we appreciate you guys. Do you remember that? I do. That's when you were on the 59th Street property and you were acting like you were guarding that property, correct? Yes. So how did it make you feel when the police are letting you pass the lines, they're warning you about people throwing rocks, they're handing out bottles of water, they're telling you that they appreciate you. How'd that make you feel? I didn't really care. I was thankful for the water because I had OC, OC stuff, gas in my eyes, but I didn't really notice or care. It didn't make you feel like they approved of what you were doing? No. It didn't make you f feel like you're emboldened now to go out there and act on their behalf? No. Let's play the video here, please. Cross. You yelled something friendly, friendly, friendly. I'm not sure how many times, but you yelled friendly out. Yes. This is... Uh, if I can use the pointer, you are crossing on the west side of Sheridan Road. You are crossing south across 60th Street here, uh, heading across the police line, which had barricaded across 60th and Sheridan. Fair? Yes. You understood at this moment that you are now entering a crowd of whatever you want to call them, protesters, demonstrators, 
Your attorneys call them rioters or looters or whatever. That's who you're going to now be part of. You're going to be in that crowd, right? I was walking through. I announced myself as friendly and that I was there to help them. Because you had to do that to warn these people that, hey, I'm on your side, right? I told them that I was friendly. Because if you didn't say that, you were worried they would see you as hostile, correct? Can, can you uh, re-ask your question? I, like, sure. I, I'm trying to Absolutely. Understand. If you're going to go up to Dominic Black or Ryan Balch, you don't need to tell them you're friendly because they know that you're friends, right? We don't, we don't tell this to our friends. Yeah. We say friendly to people that aren't our friends, people that might be hostile to us, right? Yeah, I, I said it to them because they were throwing rocks at me, and when I told them I was friendly, they stopped throwing rocks at us. And to be accurate, they were the, throwing the, the bearcats, not at you. Yeah. One of them hit one of the armored vehicles and bounced off towards you and Mr. Balch, right? Yeah. It didn't do any damage to that armored vehicle, did it? Not that I'm aware of. I mean, can you imagine trying to harm an armored vehicle with a rock? That's pretty hard to do, right? Yeah. But they weren't, no one was throwing rocks at you, but you were kind of in the ricochet line of fire. Is fair yeah. to say? Yeah. So you wanted to let these people know that, hey, I might look like I'm on the other side, but I'm really friendly. Fair? I wasn't on any side, but... I didn't say that. I said that you, you might appear to them. I mean, that was what you were worried about, right? When you said friendly? And I, I notice you looking over at your attorney a lot. Can you, I'm, I'm trying to ask you. When you are Honor, doing this. He's looking directly at Mr. Binger and I'm behind him. He, he accused Mr. Rittenhouse of looking at his attorney. Does he want him to look at the ceiling? I'll continue here. Right. You, at this very moment, announced yourself as friendly because you were worried that the people on the other side of that street would see you as hostile. Fair? I don't, I, I can't tell you how I think they would see me, but I just told them I was friendly. And I want to make sure you understand my question, because I was asking you what you thought when you said this. You said you announced yourself as friendly because you thought to yourself at that very moment, I'm walking into a group that is hostile to me. Isn't that true? It looked hostile. They were throwing rocks at the squad car. It, not the squad cars, the armored police cars. And you felt it was necessary to tell them, friendly, 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 so that they wouldn't do anything to you. Fair? Yes. Let's continue the video. There's a person that comes up to you carrying a skateboard. Do you see that? I do. And he's got some fire extinguishers slung over his shoulder? Yes. And he says something to you about something, something, putting out fires, and you respond, they know, they know. Did I understand what you said correctly there, they know? That's what I just heard, but I don't, I don't remember that interaction very well other than helping the guy after with the shoulder. And that's going to come up in a second here, but... When you're talking to this individual about the fire extinguishers, do you remember anything about that conversation? It's hard to recall, but I think it was about fires, that they were putting out fires. Okay. And when you said they know, they know, who's they? I don't recall. Do you have any idea what you were talking about? I, I don't. It seems to me, Mr. Rittenhouse, that this person is suggesting he's going to go put out some fires, and you're sort of assuring him that it's... You don't need to. It's it's okay. Would that be a fair interpretation or no? No. Okay. But you don't remember what was yeah, going on. I, I I I don't remember the conversation. What it was about other than fires and I don't recall it. This is one of the guys in the group that you later got your fire extinguisher from, right? No. Okay. 
We'll get to that in a second. Let's continue. Brian, can you continue? You good? people in this crowd if they need medical. Um, and you talked earlier about treating a couple, I don't know, somebody at the at the 59th Street car source, right? Minor injuries. Minor injuries. When you were walking around outside that property, when you're out in the street announcing what you're announcing, did anybody respond and say, yeah, I need help from you? Yes. When was that? I don't recall an exact time, but somebody cut their finger open and I gave them some gauze and some bandage tape. Was that before or after this? Do you remember? Before. Um, where physically did that happen? I don't recall. And was this a situation where you announced or you know, yelled out that you could help, and then somebody said, yeah, I need some help. Was that what, what, what went on in that situation? Yes. Okay. As you're walking along here, from this point until the end, until you shoot Rosenbaum and Huber and Grosskreutz, no one in this crowd ever says to you, yeah, I do need medical. Come over and help me. Correct? Yes. That's correct? Yes. Okay. Let's continue. No! This is the individual who accuses you of pointing your gun at them, right? Yes. And he says that you did so when he was on a vehicle, right? Yes. And in fact, he had been at the 59th Street Car Source location, climbing on, sitting on, jumping on one of the vehicles in that lot, hadn't he? Not that I'm aware of. I and know I heard uh, Joanne Fiedler testify to that, but I don't, re I don't remember seeing him at that location. But he accuses you of that here. He does. And you tell him, basically, yeah, I did point the gun at you, right? I, I shrugged it off and said, I, yeah, I did, sarcastically, meaning I didn't, but I just didn't want a confrontation. So I was like, I did, and walked away. Why did you lie to him? I didn't lie to him. I was, I was using sarcasm. The words you said, yeah, I did, those weren't true, were they? We're now fighting over sarcasm. This is a murder yeah, trial. When you told that individual, yeah, I did point a gun at you, that wasn't true, was it? I didn't point a gun at him. So why did you react to him that way in that particular moment? I thought that would be the best way to avoid conflict. I just said... Yeah, I did, sarcastically, like, I don't know what you're talking about. What conflict were you trying to avoid? Any conflict, if he would have got, like, he was accusing me of something I didn't do, so I thought the best thing would be, would be, would, the best thing to do would be to walk away instead of getting into some argument, so. But you didn't just walk away. You said to him, sarcastically, yeah, I did. Sar I said sarcastically, I did, and walked away. Because you were worried about a conflict. What conflict were you worried about? A verbal argument. This individual is clearly expressing to you that he's unhappy because he thought you pointed your gun at him. Correct? Yes. 
And you can understand why someone would be upset when you point an AR-15 at them, correct? Yes. You knew that even before this, right? Yes. In fact, back at the 59th Street car source, that crowd that you've described as not being, not having any friction, many of that crowd got upset because they thought people in your group were pointing their laser pointers at them. Do you remember that? I saw it in the videos, but I don't know what other people were doing. I, I'm not saying anybody actually was. I'm saying the crowd was upset, and you knew that. You heard them complaining, correct? Watching the videos, yes. And even at that time, that night, you heard the crowd upset because they thought members of your group were pointing their laser pointers at them. Do you remember that from that night? Sort of, yes or no. I remember Ryan Balt saying something like telling the people to stop pointing their lasers at people or something. I don't, I don't really remember that. Ryan Balch was telling the people in your group to stop doing that. The people on the roof. Who were part of your group, right? That were with the, that were there, yes. So you know when we're talking about laser pointers, we're talking about the sight at the end of some guns that helps almost like, like this, right? If, I, if somebody does this at me, you know, that could be someone pointing a gun. Correct? It could be seen as that. And that's what the crowd was complaining about, right? Yeah. So you knew from that crowd incident, and you certainly knew from this incident, that when people have guns pointed at them, it can really escalate the situation. Correct? Yeah. I, yeah, I don't think anybody had lasers on their guns. I think... Yeah, but let's go back to your group at 59th Street, because you actually didn't know any of those people other than Dominic and Nick Smith, right? Yes. You had just met Ryan Balch for the first time three or four hours before this video, right? Yeah. You had just met Jason Lakowski for the first time, just actually only a few minutes before this, right? Because he didn't get in until 10.45. Correct. So at this point in the video, I don't know, this is probably about 11.30 or so at night? I met him about 35 minutes prior to that. And probably had only spent, what, 10, 15 minutes at all in the same location as Jason Lakowski before you walk south? Yes. So again, Jason Lakowski was someone you'd never met before that night. Correct. And you barely spent any time with him that night. Correct? Correct. And of course, the people up on the roof, other than Dominic Black and Nick Smith, you didn't know any of them before that night either. Correct? I knew Dominic Black and Nick Smith, but the people on the... I misspoke yeah, your yeah, name. Sorry. Dominic Black and Nick Smith. I knew those are the two people I knew on the roof. Other than that, you didn't know anyone else before this night. Fair? Correct. Okay. Now, when this little interaction that we've just watched happens, you're still walking with Ryan Balch, aren't you? I, I'm not. I thought I was at the time, but seeing hindsight view, I'm not. When you decided to cross 60th with Ryan Balch, you two talked about the fact that if you get separated, to go back to the 59th Street car source, right? I don't recall that conversation happening. But you tried to do that, didn't you? I, I did. Because you felt like if I'm out here by myself, that's not good. I need to head back, right? Yes. And you also talked to Ryan Balch about the fact that when you get out into this crowd, Keep your mouth shut. Don't antagonize them. Didn't Ryan talk to you about that? No, we didn't talk about that. So at this very moment, you're telling us you've lost track of Ryan Balch. A little bit ahead, but around that time, yes. Let's continue the video. <laughs> You have just walked off the screen, heading east across Sheridan Road to the Ultimate Gas Station, correct? Yes. And at that point in time, you don't know where Ryan Balch is, correct? I, when I stop and look around, yes. And instead of deciding to head back at this point, you go over to Ultimate Gas and you talk to some folks over there, fair? I walk over to the Ultimate Gas Station, I walk around and I, I try to see if I can find Mr. Balch. And you couldn't do that? No. So then you decided 
to approach the police line and cross back, correct? To, I, yes. Because you decided your best course of action at that point would be to return to the same group that you'd been with, correct? Yes. Now, at that moment in time, the police had pushed everybody south of 60th, right? Sort of. I, I don't really know if there were... In I said south of 60th. Oh, okay. Let, let's go back a little bit. We, we, we watched that interview with Richie McGinnis where he first comes up to you and talks to you, right? Mm -hmm. Do you remember that? Yes. And you're standing there at the 59th Street property, aren't you? I am. And he talks to you about what you're going to do and you're say you're going to run out and help people, things like that, right? Yes. At that point, the police had already passed with all the Bearcats and MRAPs and armored vehicles, right? That's what it looks like, yes. And they had established a line on 60th and Sheridan, correct? Yes. And they pushed all of the protesters, demonstrators, rioters, whatever you want to call them, all of them south of 60th, correct? I, I don't know if I can honestly answer all of them. I don't know. If, I believe there are some people still um, north down Sheridan and in the put across the street. So were there, I mean, we saw a crowd earlier of uh, lots of protesters out in the street. That group, the numbers had dwindled quite a bit. Yes. Okay. So after the police move everybody south of 60th, there's no more actual threat to the 59th Street car source, is there? I, I don't know. Well, at that moment in time, what imminent threats did you see to the 59th Street car source property? I don't know. Do you remember seeing any protesters out in the street in front of the 59th Street car source after the police pushed everybody south of 60th? I believe there were some across the street, but not many. I, I, I can't recall completely. And that was just two or three people, right? I, I don't know how many people. None of those people came across the street to the 59th car Street car source, did they? I don't know. By the, if they did, I would have walked off by now. So you didn't see them come across the street? I did not. Fair to say that after the police pushed everybody south to 60th, you never saw any people threatening that property, correct? I didn't see anybody. And your goal that night, you took it upon yourself to protect the 59th Street property, correct? The owners asked. asked. Sure. But you were going to station yourself at that property to try and protect it from damage, fair? The car source locations, yes. And once the police had pushed everybody south of that, there was no more danger. At that car source location, yes. Okay. So why not go home at that point? Because um, I still, the police were still pushing people back and then they were backing up and I was still helping people provide medical first aid. Okay, so the police had established the line at 60th with their Bearcats at that point, right? Yes. And there was no indication that they were going to reverse and back up and move back north again that you saw, correct? No, they 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 did it earlier in the night where they did the same thing. Right, but this is at 11.30, 11.40 at night, and they've established that, the police have established that line, and as far as you can tell, it's going to stay there, right? I don't know. And you talked about trying to provide medical help, but there's no one around that needs medical help at the 59th Street car source at that point, is there? Not, not that I notice. So you don't have any purpose there anymore, do you? Other than... So why not go home? Because I was going to help people with provide first aid and medical assistance. But that wasn't the reason you were there that night. You were there that night to protect the 59th Street car source. It was one of the reasons I was there. Part of my reasons of being there was to protect the car source properties and provide first aid and medical assistance. So you went out in the crowd, like we see in this video, looking for anyone who needed your help. If somebody asked 
that they, if somebody said they need help, I would have helped them. So why go with Ryan Bulch? Because you're you're safer and better in Paris when there's somebody else that's also with you. So when you cross 60th, you were worried about your safety? A little bit. Even though you think this is not a hostile crowd and you're there to help them, you were still worried about your safety. That's why you needed Bulch to back you up, right? I said I didn't think they were hostile towards me. I didn't say that they weren't a hostile crowd. So let me rephrase my question. That's to take that into account. You didn't think this was a crowd that was hostile to you personally, and you thought you were going to help them, but yet you also felt you needed a backup, an armed former Army infantryman to protect you. Fair? Yes. And yet when he's gone and you can't find him, you don't immediately go back, right? I look for him for a second, and then I think max I look for him for like three minutes, and then I try to go back. And when you couldn't get back straight across the police lines, did you decide to try and go around the police lines? For example, the ultimate gas station is here at 60th and Sheridan. Why didn't you walk down the street here and go over this way and around? I don't know. Why didn't you go west over this way and go around? I don't know. I guess I. it was very close in time that I was heading back uh, that that I was turned down by the police before I got the phone call from Dominic Black. So I guess I didn't have time to really think like which ways I can go around. You knew the layout of downtown Kenosha, right? Because you said you drove that area the whole time, right? A little bit. So you go over to the ultimate gas station and you spend some time talking with folks that are there who are similarly dressed as you. They've got similar clothing, similar weapon, things like that, right? Similar weapons, I, was, I, don't, I wouldn't say similarly dressed. But you went over there because you felt that those were people doing something similar to what you were doing that night. Fair? I thought that would be the safest spot for me to go. Why did you think you'd be safe with those people? Because I was alone and they were, like I said, you're better in pairs and I didn't want to be alone in, in that situation. You didn't want to be alone out here with this crowd that we see on the screen right now. I right? did not want to be alone with them. You wanted to be with the group at Ultimate Gas that had AR-15s like you, right? I wanted to be um, back at the car source where there weren't people around. Right, and we've talked about that, but, but initially you go to Ultimate Gas. To look for Ryan, yes. But you also talk to people who have AR-15s just like you, right? I, I wouldn't say I talked to them. I asked After the phone call, I asked a guy for a fire extinguisher to come with me. Let's uh, play exhibit number 11 at the 54 minute and 30 second mark. This is the Corey Elijah live stream when he's in the ultimate gas lot. Mr. Rittenhouse, that's Ryan Balch standing. Yes standing there in the ultimate gas lot, correct? Yes. Let's play this video.
we just saw you run through this video, correct? Yes. I started this video at the 54 minute and 30 second mark. It is now paused at the 54 minute and 56 second mark. So for 26 seconds, Corey Elijah has Ryan Balch on screen, center of this video during that entire time, right? Yes. And you run right past where Corey Elijah is standing, right? Yes. And Ryan Balch is loitering there in the middle of the screen for at least 26 seconds, right? That's what it looks like on the screen. And your testimony is you were trying your best to find Ryan Balch at the ultimate gas station at this point because you needed him to protect you? I was looking for Ryan Balch, but I didn't notice him as I was running away, uh, not running away, running towards Car Source 3. But for 26 seconds before you start running, he's standing right there, isn't he? Yes, and I, when, when he's standing right there, bef before I run with the fire extinguisher, I'm, I'm over here on the phone with Dominic Black. How long was your phone call with Dominic Black? About 30 seconds. Okay, so before that, you'd been looking for Ryan Balch. Before that, I tried to get back to the um, car source lot number one. And you'd also been looking for Ryan Balch. Looking, yeah, seeing if I could see him in the crowd of people. Because you wanted a partner, a buddy, to protect you. To protect each other, yes. And in fact, when you borrowed that fire extinguisher, you asked someone in that group to come along with you, right? Yes. Because you wanted someone there to protect you when you go down and put out what you think are some fires, right? Yes. Because you know that you're running into a crowd that is not friendly to you, right? No. That's why you had to say the word friendly, 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 because you knew this was a crowd that would not see you as friendly, correct? I screamed friendly, friendly, friendly because somebody screamed to burn inside. I'm talking about when you crossed 60th. You yelled at them. At that time, yes. But and no one in the crowd is yelling burn inside or anything along those lines, are they? Not at that time. And you also wanted someone from that group to come along with you when you're going to go down and put out a fire because you knew full well that anyone running around like you putting fires out is going to cause a reaction in the crowd, a hostile reaction, correct? I didn't think it would cause a negative reaction. I wanted somebody to come with me because you're better in pairs, and I thought there were other people at that car source before I got there. Well, Dominic, if you're telling us that Dominic Black called you to run three blocks down the road to put out a fire at the 63rd Street car source, then you must have known at that moment that there wasn't anyone else down there, right? Why would you need to go if somebody's already down there? Mr. Black said to me on the phone, hey, they're setting fires at the other car source. I need you to get down there and put out the fires. It must not have, I don't think it, I took it as there's not other people down there. Why would you need to go three blocks down if there were already people there? To help. He's asking a question. This witness doesn't know the answer, whether there are people there or not. He's told us he thought there were, so I'm probing the basis of that and his understanding at the time. You can answer if I understand the question. I'll repeat the question. Why would you need to run three blocks down to the 63rd car source if you thought there were already people there? I thought there were people there, but I, Dominic asked me to go down there. I thought that was to help put out the fires that were down there. You're, you this video that we're watching is minutes after you've left the 59th Street car source, right? Yes. And when you leave the 59th Street car source, you're with Ryan Balch. Yes. And then this reporter, Richie McGinnis. Yes. And as far as you know, when you leave 59th Street car source, everybody in your group is still back there, right? At the car source. At 59th Street car yes. source. Yes. Everybody's still back there. Yes. Joanne Fiedler. Yes. Dustin Collette. Dominic Black. Nick Smith. Jason Lakowski. 
anyone else, they're all still there, right? At that location, yes. So none of your group is already down at 63rd Street Car Source, right? The other group that showed up after we got done taking the pictures with the, I, I think I said two or three vans, I believe they were still down there. And that was two or three vans of people that came out with what have been described as melee weapons, right? Like bats and clubs and things like that. Do you recall that? First of all, do you recall that testimony? I, I do. Do you remember seeing those two or three vans come to that location? I, I do. Do you remember seeing people get out of those vans? Yes, I, I saw, uh, I think there were six people um, They, in total. And you saw them with weapons? I saw them with, I saw them with rifles. I don't think I remember melee weapons. They were armed, correct? Yes. And you believed that they were going to be the ones protecting the 63rd Street car source, correct? Yes. So at this point in time in the evening, had anybody told you that those folks had left the 63rd Street car source? No. So when you're running with this fire extinguisher, you think there's already a group that's designated to that spot that's still down there, right? Yes. So again, why do you feel that you needed to run three blocks down there with a fire extinguisher if you thought there were already people down there protecting that property? Because I, Dominic called me and asked me to go help put out the fires down there. And in that phone call, Dominic never told you that any of the members of the 59th Street group that you were part of, he never said any of them were down there at 63rd, right? Yes. And he never told you that the group that was supposed to be down there, he never told you anything about them, whether they were there or not there. He never mentioned that. It, Fair? It didn't come up. And you asked the people that you got the fire extinguisher to, uh, from to come with you, right? Yes. You were looking for Ryan Balch for backup, right? I was looking around for him, yes. You had already tried to go back to the 59th Street location, right? Yes. And all of those fail? Yes. So then you decide to take it upon yourself to head down to 63rd Street to put out fires. Fair? I wouldn't say that. I would say I want to go put down, put put out the fires that I was there to do when but when I say protect the property, I mean by like put out fires. So I went to go put out the fires. I just believe there are people there. And you brought your AR-15 along? Yes. Why? Because it was with me already. Yeah, but you'd taken it off earlier when you were treating someone. You gave it to Joanne Fiedler, right? Yes. So you know how to take it off, don't you? Yes. And you can make a choice on your own whether or not to go armed with it or whether to give it to the person who is the lawful owner of it on that date, Dominic Black, correct? I didn't take my rifle off there because there was nobody I could hand it to. Um, and when I took it off to hand it to Joanne Fiedler, I was in a safe spot in the corner of the building where there were people protecting me at that time right there. When I went to go to the car source number three to put out the fires, there was nobody I could hand my rifle to that could protect me while I'm providing first aid to somebody. But you still knew you had it? My you rifle, yes. You still knew you had it strapped around your body? Yes. And you made a conscious decision to bring it along, right? Yes. Why? He, he gave an answer about how he already had it, and we we've, we've go through on that. So, I, I did, but I don't really understand what... Well, you... Was it simply that, well, I've already got it strapped on, so I might as well bring it along? Is that what you're telling us? You decided to bring along the AR-15 because, well, I've already got it? Is that your answer? I, I don't think I was thinking, to like, hey, I'm going to take my rifle off. I, I wouldn't have because th I, there was people around that could have stolen my gun, and I didn't... I didn't take my rifle off because I was going there alone. I, I was going to be running there alone, and I didn't I didn't take it off because no one else was there to protect me um, as I was going there, so I, that's why I brought it. For protection? Yes. 
you brought it along down there because you felt like you would need to protect yourself against someone else harming you. Correct? If that would have happened, I would have protected myself, but I, I didn't think I was going to be attacked and ambushed. But you just said you had it for protection. What were you expecting you would need protection from? I, I, this is, uh, I thought we had covered much of this before. I'm specifically focusing in on the time period where he is heading down to the 63rd car, Street car source. I have not asked him about this yet, Your Honor. Well, go ahead. But uh, you need to pick up the pace somewhat. When you decided to bring your AR-15 loaded with 30 rounds down to the 63rd Street source, car source location, what did you think you needed protection against? I didn't really think I was going to have to protect myself. You told us just now you brought it along for protection. I did, but I didn't think I was going to need to protect myself. You brought it along for protection, but you didn't think you needed protection? I'm trying to clarify the two different answers that I think he just gave, Your Honor. Well, that, uh, go ahead. Can you, do, do you understand, understand the, the question? question? Not really. I asked you why you brought the gun. You said you needed it for protection. I said, protection against what? You said you didn't think you needed protection. I'm confused. Can you help me understand why you're telling us you needed a gun for protection, but you didn't think you needed protection? I brought the gun for my protection, but what I was saying is I didn't think I would have to use the gun and end up defending myself. So you, in this video, are running. Yes. You run across the screen. Yes? Yes. And then I think you testified on direct that as you made it down the block, you, I don't remember exactly how you phrased it, but you, you, you stopped running and you, you walked for a little while. Is that right? I jogged and walked occasionally. Carrying the fire extinguisher and your gun. Yes. And you're alone at that point with no backup, right? Yes. And you testified that when you got down to the 63rd Street car source, you indicated that you came upon that vehicle we've been calling the Duramax. You know what vehicle I'm talking about? I do. And you indicated that when you got there, you walked around that vehicle and you saw a person that you now know to be Joshua Zeminski. Is that right? I, I walked up to the Duramax. Yes. You didn't know Joshua Zeminski's name at that point, correct? No. You hadn't taken any notice of him at all up until that moment, all night long. Fair? Fair. This is the first time that you see that this is a person that comes to your attention. Fair? Yes. And you said he had a gun in his hand. Yes. And you put the fire extinguisher down on the ground. I, I dropped the fire extinguisher. And then you hear or see Mr. Rosenbaum coming from behind you. I... When I get to the Duramax, I step forward, and then Mr. Zeminski turns towards me, and he steps towards me. I drop the fire extinguisher, step back, and that's when I see, I, I, I go to run back towards 59th Street. And Mr. Rosenbaum is coming. Don't interrupt. And then I, that's when I notice Mr. Rosenbaum running at me, leaving me with no other, right? Mr. Zeminski in front of me with the gun. M Mrs. Zeminski right there, um, a couple of feet away, and then some other people I, there. And then the chase happens. Is that yes. fair to say? Yes. Have you told us everything that you did when that situation just happened at the Duramax? Yes. Can we play the iPad, please? the iPad with the drone video. This is exhibit number 73. I don't know if you, what are you guys going to do?
Mr. Rittenhouse, this is a video that has been admitted into evidence as exhibit number 73. This is a video taken by a drone that was hovering south of 63rd uh, at the time that you shot Mr. Uh, Rosenbaum. We're going to play the beginning of this video on the iPad and I'm going to have Detective Howard uh, use the pinch and zoom feature on the iPad to zoom in on the area the presence of the jury. What do you think? Perfect time for a break, don't you think? Uh, let's take a break. Please don't talk about the case uh, during the break. Read, watch, or listen to any account of the trial. What's up? Your Honor. What, excuse me, what? I think they went upstairs, though. Uh, go ahead. Your Honor, I don't know what the state's going to do next, but I suspect that it's something along the lines of they're going to use the iPad, and Mr. Binger was talking about pinching the screen iPads, which are made by Apple, have artificial intelligence in them that allow things to be viewed through three dimensions and logarithms. A logarithms? I don't understand it all either. Um, and it uses artificial intelligence or their logarithms to create what they believe is happening. So this isn't actually enhanced video. This is Apple's iPad programming creating what it thinks is there, not what necessarily is there. And I don't know what's going to happen, but we had this video enhanced. We have testimony regarding it. And this is one of the topics that came up. I asked my expert. I said, do you know of anything that does something like that? Because that was when Detective Antaramian testified about pinching his telephone and that's what I was told and that's what I think this is going and I don't think that it's appropriate it's uh, it's wrong Mr. Binger your honor I think everybody in the uh, in this room has a smartphone whether it's an Apple iPhone or some other device and I think uh, we've all taken a photograph or a video at one point or another and used the the pinch to zoom in feature. This is a common part of everyone's everyday life. Um, in the olden days, you had a photograph and a, mi and a magnifying glass, right? That doesn't change the photograph. When you use a magnifying glass to look at words on a paper or a photograph, the magnifying glass doesn't change the image. It doesn't change the pickles, pixels on the paper. It doesn't change the words in the book. All it does is make them easier to see. The pinch and zoom feature on the iPad or the iPhone or an Android phone, whatever device everyone in this room has, does that exact same thing. Now, if counsel has an expert who will say that this is unreliable or distorting the image or something along those lines, even though this is something everybody in this room has done with countless videos and photos throughout the last 20 or 10 years of our lives here, um, this is a fact, this is a feature of everyday life in America now with smartphones. If they want to have an expert come in and say it's unreliable and you can't believe what's on that screen, they can do that. We're still in their case. And then the jury can make a decision as to whether or not pinching and zooming on an iPad or an iPhone is 
tampering with the video, or altering the image, or unreliable, or shouldn't be given any weight. So if they want to make a jury question out of this, they are free to do so. We're still in their case in chief. But I don't, frankly, understand or agree with anything counsel just said. I've used my phone, I think probably you have too, I think this is something within everyone's common knowledge, to pinch and zoom on a screen. And that's what's going on here. It does not change the image in any way. It just makes like a magnifying glass. Well, I don't know. When I put the magnifying glass up, then it's enlarging the image. It is not altering the image. What he's saying, and I think, and I know less than anyone in the room here, I'm sure, about all this stuff, but I'm hearing him to say that they're actually artificially inserting pixels into there, which is altering the object which is being portrayed. And so, you know what, myself, when confronted with these changes in technology, what I usually do is to have, to admit the evidence, but make sure that the finder of fact is aware of the fact that it is not the original image and the method by which it's been enhanced. You're suggesting that I should make the defense bring in an expert for it. My thought would be that actually you're the one who's offering the exhibit, so you should be in a position to offer evidence as to the fact that it is not distorting the object which is depicted. I would submit, Your Honor, that I think it's common sense to everyone in this room that that's not what's going on here. And what counsel is saying about Apple software and logarithms and things like that is not something that people in this room are familiar with. I thought I heard the expert say on the stand, and believe me, again, this is not something I'm familiar with, but I thought I heard the expert say that you brought down from the crime lab that in fact that there were alterations made by adding pixels. That's an alteration of the image. So I don't have any problem with it being received, but you're going to have to have someone testify that it's a reliable, I don't want to say mirror image, because obviously if you insert more items into an area of space, it's going to distort what's depicted. I think, Your Honor, when the pinch and zoom maneuver is used on the screen, it actually takes the high resolution that we see here and it brings it into the point where the pixels are actually spread out more. You know what? I'm not going to accept as accurate what Richards is saying, and I'm not going to accept what you're telling me. I said if you can offer somebody who's knowledgeable in these areas the document, or I think you should be allowed to use the image, but this is high risk. To me, if you insert more data into an area of space, well, you're wagging your head no. Tell me where I'm wrong. There's no proof in this record that we're doing that, Your Honor. I didn't say there was proof of it. I said you have the burden of proof. You're the proponent of the exhibit, and you need to tell me that it's reliable. The exhibit's already in evidence, Your Honor. That I know. The enhanced exhibit is not in evidence. This is not enhancing. Well, then why show it? I mean, the reason you want to show it is because it enhances the image, right? No, 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 one at a time. I'll say what Mr. Cross is just saying. The defense has taken videos and photos and cropped them, zoomed in on them on many exhibits in this trial, and this is, again, like I said, the magnifying glass is not changing the image. What the expert testified to about his software program was that he uses, I think he called it MFAR-5 or something like that. It was a software program he was using to create the additional images or the exhibits that were introduced with regard to this drone video, and he talked about what that software program does. He was not talking about the common, ordinary, everyday pinch and zoom feature on the Apple. They're two different things, Your Honor, and I want to be precise about this because I don't think it's fair to equate the technical video editing software used by the crime lab 
with pinching and zooming on an iPhone. They're, they're different software programs, different procedures, and I don't think it's fair to extrapolate this. The, every one of those jurors is familiar with this process. This is a, a, a fundamental part of our lives nowadays. It's much like 100 years ago, people used magnifying glasses. This is no different than that. And if I think this is common knowledge, and I don't think I need any sort of expertise on this issue. If the defense wants to quibble with it, they have an expert who can offer testimony. But the exhibit's already in evidence. It would be well, no first different off, than me first putting off a, a photograph of it and then, and then holding up an, uh, an enlargement. I mean, we had a guy come in yesterday with Walgreens prints. I mean, this is, this is what is done with photographs all the time. There's enlargements done in the lab. It doesn't change the pixels. Don't, change. No, no, no. You, you know, I don't want to hear about what happened earlier in the trial that came in without objection. If you didn't object, then I didn't address it. Now, I'm not going to police this case, so everybody, anytime somebody wants to put some evidence in, I'm going to say, well, wait a minute, what about that, what about that? I have to have an objection. I get an objection, and then I rule on it. There has been no objection during this trial when either side has exploded an image or, or anything like that. If you'd have brought out in an objection, if he'd have brought in an objection, I would have ruled on it. But to, to say now, well, this has already been done during the trial. I've got an objection in front of me now. He's suggesting that the uh, amplifying the image uh, is, uh, is altering what is portrayed, the image which is portrayed. And you're giving me, as a defense, it's no different from using a magnifying glass I don't believe that because if I take, you know, the image is the same and all it is doing is improving my poor old vision. Uh, here you've got uh, someone, uh, to correct me if I'm wrong, I do believe the expert that, uh, testified that he had inserted, a, or the, either the him or the device, inserted additional pix pixels into the image. That Different program, yeah. Well, I don't know what kind of a program. I don't care what kind of a program it is. The question is, is the is the is the image in its virginal state? I, I, I care about what program it is, Your Honor, because these are these are technical issues. Mr. Richards has just made representations with no basis whatsoever. Can you slow down? Absolutely. Mr. Richards has just made technical representations with no basis in this record whatsoever. He is questioning a common part of life that we use, everyone uses, every single day. The expert who testified was talking about a different software program, and it does make a difference. I don't know. Well, then, you're, then you're if it's going to be an issue, let's, well, let's you're make the it proponent. Issue. I said before, I'm not going to talk about it further. You're the proponent, and you need to uh, assure me before I let the jury um, uh, uh, speculate on it that it is a reliable method that does that does not distort what is depicted. So okay, I, so we're gonna take a break. I understood you correctly. We can play it now and then we'll tie it up later. I don't think that's what I said. That's what I thought you said. So that's why I'm asking. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe I I, I did. If I said that, uh, shame on me. I said, I said that we're going to take a break right now. And I said, before I'm going to allow this to be uh, amplified in the way that you want, it is going to have to be shown, demonstrated to me, that it's a reliable way to do it. Then we would request an adjournment to do that now. Well, we're not going to adjourn the case now to do that. Well, before I am done with my cross-examination of this witness, I would like to use this video, and I will need some time to make arrangements for what you're asking. So I would ask that before I am, uh, I would like time to do that before I'm done cross-examining this witness because this is an important exhibit that I intend to use with well, this witness. Well, it depends. Why don't you get on it right away and you know maybe you can get somebody to uh, testify on this within minutes. I don't know. So we'll take a break. Uh, what let's operating system are they using on the iPad? We can answer that question. Do you know? Not off the top of my head. Thank you. Well, Okay. Uh, let's aim for uh, 320 on that clock, which is. Yeah, let's aim for 320.